Welcome to High Impact Living, the motivational speaking of Rick McDaniel, the noted author, international communicator, and senior pastor at Richmond Community Church in Richmond, Virginia. Take out information, guys, if you would, the purple note sheet that you find in there, and we're going to continue our series dream year today. We're going to talk about focus today, and again, those of you from last week and the confusion, this is the, this is the one. This is the focus message. If you came last week for it, you're going to be happy that you came today, and just welcome everyone joining us at the Glen Allen campus, on the Internet campus and on High Impact Living as well. We're going to read out of the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. You cannot have a dream year without focus. Absolutely. It, it can't happen. A lack of focus is a major reason why people miss out. Miss out on ever fulfilling their dreams. Miss out on ever becoming who God has called them to become. I'm just going to tell you right now, this is not like a message that you would normally hear uh, in most churches. It is the kind of message that I've done for years, although maybe it's been a little while. It's the kind of message that you want to use that note sheet that we gave you today. You want to use it, you want to use your smartphone and take notes, you say, well, it's a little dark in here, Pastor Rick, use a flashlight on your phone, you'll be able to do it. In fact, right now, you ought to circle this word, focus. Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. If you're you're reading from your smartphone or your iPad or tablet, highlight it, focus. This is a message in which you will want to take notes. I'm going to give you a lot of information. I'm going to give you a lot of questions that you can ask yourself. Questions that you can't ask and answer today while you're listening, but questions you can write down and answer in the days and weeks to come. I would also just be frank with you. It sounds like a sales pitch, but it's not. To hear this week's message and not hear next week's message, it, would, would just, it wouldn't work very well. This week on Focus and next week on Dreams both need to be heard or viewed together because they go together. They, one naturally leads to the other. And so it is vitally important to end up getting both and being able to put them together. What I'm going to share with you today, I did myself over 10 years ago. Over 10 years ago, the church said, Pastor Rick, you've been here for all these years. You founded this church, and we want to give you a sabbatical, a three-month sabbatical. Well, sounded great to me. Uh, The three-month sabbatical turned into one month, but uh, one month is better than no months. And so I took that one month, and part of what I did was I went, actually, I, I, I did several things, and then I ended it uh, visiting with my, uh, with my folks back in Connecticut, and I used to get up every morning and drive to their local little library, and I sat down in that library. I like libraries. I always studied in the library, went to college, one of my secrets of successful College is go to the library. It's a lot less uh, distracting. You can focus when you're not hanging out with your friends in your dorm room or wherever else. I'm not the kind of guy, I know there are pastors that do it, but I'm not the kind of guy that would go to a Starbucks to try to work on a message. It's way too distracting. I think that the place that you put yourself is important. So I went there every day and I went through this. I'm just giving you the condensed version of it today. I, can't, uh, I cannot tell you the difference this has made in my life. The launching of the High Impact Living broadcast is a direct result of what happened in this focusing experience. The re-zooming, the relaunching of my writing career is a direct result of that focus and that experience. And those two things have allowed me to amplify my impact from thousands to hundreds of thousands they have allowed me and continue. I mean, I got a new book coming out this year. I'm super excited about it. Just got two great endorsements this past week. I, I just, I have 10 chapters done on the next book. I have the next book all outlined and ready to go. I mean, it's, it's gonna be marvelous what the years uh, hold and I trace it all back 
to this time of focus, of trying to focus my life, and I cannot give an, a strong enough uh, approval, stamp of approval to this, and I just hope that if you ever listened, today is that you would listen and take notes, because it can literally change your life, and I know that I say that periodically, and I mean it every time I say it, but this is just one of these moments. You're not going to come across this very often. Let's just go back to the Bible to make sure we have a clear foundation. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past. I look forward to what lies ahead, and I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize. That's it, friends. It's a forward focus. It's a forward focus, and what is the purpose of that forward focus? The Bible says to reach the end of the race and to receive the prize, to reach the end of the race and to win, to win, to win at your life, at the reason why God placed you on this earth, the purpose that you are here for. And it all, just, just let's just walk it back now. Okay, receiving the prize. And, and how do I receive the prize? By finishing the race. And how do I finish the race? By pressing on. And how do I press on? By looking forward. And how do I do all of that? By focusing on this one thing. Focus. Focus your life guaranteed, not only will you have a dream year, you will really have a dream life. Your life will, will become what you envisioned it to be and certainly what God planned it to be. So it's a three-step process. Here is how it works. Step number one, understand yourself. The first thing you have to do is understand you. I'm going to make a statement. It may sound... Uh, like it's generic, but I think a lot of people don't get it. Here it is. If you assume that everyone is like you, you'll never look for your uniqueness. I've been doing this a long time now. I've been working with people for a long time. I've been leading for a long time. I've known all kinds of people of every age and gender and race and ethnicity. I've met people all around the world on six different continents, and I'm just telling you, too many people think everyone else is just like them. And when you think everyone else is just like you, you never look for your uniqueness. But the reality is, is that every single one of us is unique. Every single one of us are special in the best sense of that word. And that God has placed us on this earth for a reason. God does not make junk. God makes masterpieces. God is very happy just the way he made you. You need to discover you and how God has made you and wired you to be. You don't have to change it until you first understand who you are. Here's another, again, generic statement, but it's so true. What's easy for you is not easy for everyone. And what's hard for you is not hard for everyone else. It's just important to just be reminded of these things. We're all different. I, I was out of town this whole week. I've been gone all week, and so I just, uh, you know, reunited with my wife. Now, you know, we've been married for a long time, so I've been on many trips. But still, it's still funny when you're gone for a whole week, and then you sort of get back to, together, and you, you know, you catch up on things, and, and things come up. And it just always strikes me, uh, as well as I know my wife, you know, just that we're just different, that we are just different people. There's just no ifs, ands, or, or buts about it. And it doesn't mean that, that, that I'm right or she's wrong or, or she's better than me. It just means that everyone is unique and everyone has their strengths and everyone has their weaknesses. And things that are easy for me are not necessarily easy for my wife. And things that are easy for her are not necessarily easy for me. And that's just the way it is. And we just have to understand ourselves and our uniqueness and embrace the fact that, you know, God made us this way. This is the way God made us. And you've got to get a handle on exactly who you are. So I've talked about the Pareto principle many times, 80-20, right? 80% 80 
uh, of the people, you know, 80% uh, of the work is done by 20% of the people, 80% of the giving is done by 20% of the people, blah, blah, blah. The Pareto principle, French economic uh, economist came up with it, but it applies in a lot of different, I could make five or six applications right now, but let's just apply it to you right now. And let's use it in a slightly different way. Look at your life, and I, here, so here's the first of many questions to be answered. Eight strengths and two weaknesses. Identify eight of your strengths and two of your weaknesses. Most of you, here's what I know about people, would find it very easy to identify eight of your weaknesses and two of your strengths. That is not what God wants for your life. Eight of your strengths and two of your weaknesses. We just get beaten down and beaten down. My wife loves this movie, uh, old movie, um, Pretty Woman. She just loves the story, you know, this woman. It's got a couple of uh, sketchy parts in it for a pastor, but the fundamental principle is a nice principle. And there's a line in that movie where, where the, the, the main character is talking to her girlfriend and she's talking to her about how she doesn't have to be a prostitute anymore. In fact, she could do something else with her life. And she's trying to encourage her to do that. And the girl makes this statement. And it's powerful. She says, you know, you just hear the bad stuff for so long that you begin to believe it. When you hear the bad stuff for so long, you just begin to believe it's true. And the world has a way of beating you down. But I'm telling you, friends, it doesn't have to be that way. God doesn't make junk. God makes masterpieces. And there are strengths in your life. And you need to find those strengths far greater than your weaknesses. And you need to center yourself on your uniqueness and on your strengths. What is it about you that is you, that is unique to you? that is special about you, that are strengths that, that you have. And it's not that other people don't have them, but they may not have them in the combination in which they have them. Or they may not have them within the personality in which you have them. Or within the gender, or whatever. There's something about you that is unique. And you've got to understand yourself. You have to be... To come to a place where you say, if I'm going to focus my life, it's going to begin by focusing on my unique strengths. What are your unique strengths? What is it about you that is unique to you? Because that's what God can use. God can cannot use a person who focuses on their shortcomings and their weaknesses and their deficiencies because that is not a faith-filled, confident, bold person. And God wants you to have the kind of confidence that comes in knowing who you are. Not arrogance now, not pridefulness, but a confidence in knowing this is who I am. This is the person that God has created me to be. And I'm going to take that person and I'm going to do something with that person. But first, you have to understand that. Understand yourself. Now, you have to evaluate yourself. You have to have a time in which you, you say, oh, I don't understand, Pastor, the difference between understanding myself and evaluating yourself. Here it is. Understanding yourself is this is the way God created me. Evaluating yourself is saying, this is where I am right now. This is where I am right now. This is where I am at 22. This is where I am at 16. This is where I am at 28. This is where I am at 35. This is where I am at 43. This is where I am at 51. This is where I am at 62. This is where I am at 75. This is where I am right now. You, you, listen, what does it say? Forgetting the past. Forgetting the past. You can't do anything about what has already happened. So there's no point in that. The only thing the past can do is inform you about understanding yourself. All you can do now is go forward. Looking forward. Moving forward. From this day forward. Forward. 
Where am I going to go today? I have to evaluate myself right now. Where do you stand today? You need to have a reflective time where you can look at your life, not just live your life. That's why I did this sabbatical thing that I did. I had I had uh, done all of my schooling, earned all these degrees. I had started this church. I had built this church. Okay, all right, great. I had raised, or I was in the process of raising my children. Now, now what? Now what? Now where from here? How do I realize my full God-given potential? How do you realize your full God-given potential? And here's what I know. Most of us just stay the forest for the trees, right? You know, the forest for the trees, the trees for the forest. All we do is just, boom, we're just in it and in it and in it, and we never get above it and get any sort of perspective. You've got to have a time of reflection. And you can do this in a number of different ways or different combinations. So let me just share a, 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 some with you. One, one thing you could do is choose to take a couple of days out of a year and just do a time of reflection, and I'll describe that in a little more detail in a moment. Or you might try just taking a morning each month to do reflection, or you might take an hour each week. Now, to start this, you're gonna have to take more time. To maintain it, you don't have to take as much time necessarily. Although, look, here's what we do. I can tell you at the church, every January, right at the beginning of the year, we have this time of reflection. We have this time of, of planning where the pastors go away and we, we look at the previous year and uh, we evaluate it and then we decide what changes need to be made and what new initiatives need to be launched and how are we going to realize our church potential. How are we going to do that? And you need to do the same thing in your personal life. If you just keep going, 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 you never have focus. And without clear focus, crystal clear focus, you cannot have a dream year. It's, it just, it, it won't happen. It just won't happen. You can want it, you can talk about it, it won't happen. It will happen only with focus. When you have clear focus, that's the way you can have a dream year. So, this is when you get away from the phone, when you get away from the emails, from the text. This is when you get away from work. This is even when you get away from your, your family. You've got to focus and understand who you are. Now, there's also values, and I've talked about this before, value, and say a couple doing this in sort of a goal retreat, like what do we want in our family? And there, there's six different areas that you could examine and sort of evaluate in your family. That's a, but that's another part of it. This part is just about you as an individual, as a person, because here's the thing. When you stand before God and answer for your life, you won't be able to say, oh, honey, come over here. There'll, there'll be no honey, come over here. It'll be you and you alone. You will answer to God for your life. You will not answer for anybody else's life, and no one else can you know, come over and say, well, I just want to tell you that my son is just a real sweetie, and he... No, there'll be none of that. It'll just be you and God, and that's it. So you've got to take responsibility for your own life and evaluate yourself. You've got to have that time when you just look at your life. Now, you say, well, what am I going to do in that? Well, just hold on now. I'll get there. The message isn't done yet. I'll give you the questions you can ask yourself, and, some, and there are certainly more that, that you can come up with. What I can tell you is this, that this process of evaluation should lead to planning in which your schedule is planned. And I, I, I've said this many times. I just uh, said it not long ago to a friend of mine. He's like, oh, I've never heard that before. And I thought, man, that's, I can't believe that, but okay. I don't know that it's unique to me. Maybe it is, but I don't think it is. Here it is. You don't schedule, you don't plan your schedule. You schedule your priorities. You schedule in your, you don't prioritize your schedule. You don't look at your schedule and go, oh, how can I make my, no, you, you plan your priorities. You schedule your priorities. You put them in first. You don't let your schedule get planned for you and then try to prioritize what's already in there because there's things in there that probably shouldn't be in there and there's things that should be in your schedule that aren't right now and that's got to change. So you've got to schedule in your priorities. 
And if you were to look at my own personal schedule, for instance, if I were to open that up to you and I would show, you could see right off the bat, you could see exactly that I, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm scheduling in these things that are priorities because if you don't schedule them in, they simply do not get done. You, you've got to take control over your time and over your schedule, which is your life, and say the reason why you're not having a dream year, the reason why you're not accomplishing what you want to accomplish is because you're allowing other people to essentially run your life. You're allowing the schedule, and that you've never gotten off the treadmill. You've never gotten off the wheel long enough to go, hold on, why am I doing what I'm doing? Is this what I should be doing with my life? Is this, is this where this year should be going? And you'll never get there until you can say, I'm going to hit the pause button here, and I'm going I'm to step off here, and I'm going to evaluate, and I'm going to really look at myself, and I'm going to look at my life, and I'm going to look at my strengths, and I'm going to look at my uniqueness, and I'm going to say, is this the best context? Is this the best organizational context? Is this, is this the best place for me to do what it is that I need to do? In the process of doing that, some things should come up. For instance, what is it that burdens you? What is it that really burdens you? And it could be any number of things. It could be financial burden that's placed on you. It could be a burden for a friend of yours that is challenged with sickness or disease. It could be any number of things. But you have to attend to that. When my mother was sick with cancer... Uh, was right in the middle of just a super busy time here at the church. We had just built this building, and, and there was all kinds of growth happening. And uh, the idea of flying all the way back and forth to Connecticut uh, uh, was, was a challenge and an expensive, an expense, and, you know, all the other stuff. But uh, I said to myself, you know, uh, there's just no way I, I, I can just allow, just allow this to happen and, and, not, and not spend time with my mother because I, I knew I knew that when she came to visit at Christmas and she was like always kind of a small petite lady, but I mean she was like so small that like to buy her clothes would be almost like buying in almost like a children's department under 100 pounds. I mean just I don't have to be a, a medical doctor to figure out where that was going. So I just made the time to do that. I just said this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to make sure and do it and I don't regret it. I don't regret it a bit because... She died within six months. So, I mean, those six months were precious, precious moments. So, you know, you can let your schedule just get a hold of you. And I, I've painted, obviously, a kind of a serious picture there. It may not be something that serious, or it may be. But it, whatever it is, you've got to determine. I'll tell you another one. When I went on that sabbatical, one of the things that I did was I took my dad on a trip from most of my life, I had heard my dad tell this story about a particular place that he wanted to visit in the world, uh, actually in North America, because a friend of his had told him it was the greatest place, and I heard him talk about it, 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 and never do anything about it. And so finally, one day, I, I just called him up, and I said, Dad, we are going to, we're going there. And he said, what do you mean we're going there? I, 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 I said, you and me are taking a trip and we are going. And we had the greatest time, uh, just the greatest time, just the absolute greatest time. It's, it will be a memory. My dad just had his 85th birthday this past week, so that's, that's good news. But, you know, 85 years, obviously uh, there aren't that many years left. And I'll always remember that. I'll always have great memories. We went fishing, and we, bought, we caught this fish. And uh, when you're you know, in another place and you're traveling, you're like, what are we going to do with this? And I brought the fish back, and I asked the chef at the hotel if he could make this fish, dip, like make a meal out of this. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it. And it was like the greatest fish dinner I've ever had. My dad got such a kick out of that because he just didn't even think it was possible. I reminded him, since he is a, follow, a follower of Christ, that Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. So if you want your fish dinner to be made by the chef, you can just ask him. He can say no, or he could say yes. These are the things that you have to determine. What are the burdens in your life? What about, what about the possibilities, the, the, the focus for this year for our church? 
What about those possibilities like a job promotion or a healthier lifestyle? How's that ever going to happen? How's that ever going to, how's that going to happen this year? It's going to happen because you evaluate yourself. You evaluate where you are and you say, you know what, I'm tired of just talking about this and wanting this and wishing this would be the case. And uh, my mother used to always say, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, Johnny would be a happy boy. You ever heard that one? If ifs and buts were candy and nuts, you know, Rick would be a happy boy. Like, in other words, don't live your life with ifs and buts and do something about it. And that begins with evaluating yourself. All right, here's the third step. Focus yourself. And there are key questions, key questions that can keep your heart and your mind with a crystal clear focus. So I'm going to share these questions with you. Here's question number one. What do you need to grow in in order to be ready for a new opportunity? What do you need to grow in to be ready for that? Some of you have a dream, and it's not that God doesn't want to make that dream come true. It's, it's that you're not ready for the dream because you haven't done what you need to do to get ready for God to place that in your lap. To say it in a more spiritual context, God will never pour a blessing into a vessel that is not big enough to, to contain it. Like if you've got, if God's got a huge blessing for you that is a 50-gallon blessing and you have a 20-gallon container, he's, God will not waste. God will not allow waste to happen. He will not pour it in and spill all out and get wasted. You've got you've to be a big enough vessel for God to be able to pour that 50-gallon blessing in and make sure it all stays contained. All right, I've talked about your strengths. Now here's, this, and this is what I did over 10 years ago, and this was the number one thing that really worked for me and really set me on a different course. So I'm going to share it with you. You, t- you say well, eight strengths and two weaknesses. Yes, just to get yourself thinking about the fact that, you know, you have some strengths and you're a unique and special person and there's things about you. Okay, now take those eight strengths and then you got to move them down to, say, five and down to three. What is your one single greatest strength? This is a very hard thing to do, but it can be done. What is your single greatest strength? In other words, take it down into one, one thing. Now, Watch, focus, eight to five to three to one. Crystal laser focus. What is it about lasers that are now being used in medicine and in industry? Used to be the stuff of science fiction. What is it? It's that incredible pinpoint focus that you can get with a laser. You need a laser-like focus. What is your one single greatest strength? Above all others, what is it? And then you take all your time, all your energy, all your resources, and you move it in that direction. You move it right there. You maximize the greatest strength. What is it about you? That is the best thing about you, which is the thing that you can contribute to this world better than anything else. What is it? That is focus. Got to get there, friends. And that is not something, you know, that just you can just do in 15 minutes. I mean, you really have to sit down in a quiet place and just really ask yourself, what is it? If you were to just have to winnow it down, you know, winnow it down and winnow it down. Here's some other questions as it re- applies to this year. What one word best captures your focus for this new year? For our church, the word is possibilities. Last year, the word was what? Somebody said, greater. Last year it was greater. This year it's possibilities. What's the one word well, I'm going to take that from me, Pastor Rick. That's good. Well, you know, you can. 
But before you maybe sort of do that, maybe you want to put a little effort into it, what's the one word? What's your one word focus? For how are you going to have a dream year? You don't even have a one word focus. You, it can't happen, friends. It can't happen. This is just this, you know, just, oh, I hope so. I just hope it happens. I wish it would happen. Oh, it would be so great. That's, that never gets you anywhere. But focus gets you right where you want to get to. What's the one word? All right, here's some other very helpful questions. What three things do you most want to accomplish? I'm not going to take the time now to give you the, the, the theology or the philosophy or the thinking behind it, but there is enormous power in the number three. You may notice that your pastor many times has how many points in his messages? Three. You think that's by accident? The Trinity is what? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I could go on and on and show you in enormous in theological ways, methodological ways, epistemological ways. I could show you the whole deal, friends. Three is a very important number, and it, 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 there's much about it that much research that's been done that will show you the enormous benefit of thinking in threes. What three things do you most want to accomplish? All right, here's the other side of it. What three roadblocks need your immediate attention? These are just questions that you have to just grapple with. You don't have to grapple with them all at the same time, but I have my one shot here, so I've got to give you more than a little bit of information. What three roadblocks, what three roadblocks need immediate attention? What are three roadblocks that are standing in your way? We talked about breakthroughs in our time of prayer. We're going to finish the 21 days tonight with the leaders. We'll be praying once again about breakthroughs. Breakthrough. What, what three areas do you need a breakthrough? You could say it another way. What three steps could you take right now? that would make 2017 a dream year. Now, you know, you may say, well, Pastor, if I knew that, uh, you know, I wouldn't need you. Well, <laughs> um, you need me because no one ever told you to do that. You say, well, I don't know what those three steps are. Y yes, you do. Yes, you do. You just never put enough effort into thinking about it long enough until you come up with that answer. I didn't say it would come to your mind immediately. I didn't say it would be easy. But you can get that answer, friends. You'll have to struggle with it. You'll have to grapple with it. But you can get to it. What three steps do you need to take? And, of course, some of you are saying, Pastor, I don't need to struggle with it at all. I know exactly what those three steps are. I need to stop eating so many donuts. You know, I mean, hey, some of this, I want to be healthy. Well, okay. Maybe you just write down everything you eat for two weeks. Just write everything down with brutal honesty. Everything. The thing that you eat at 8.30 at night. Well, that doesn't count. It's after dinner. The thing you eat at 8.30 at night. Everything you eat. The soda, the drinks. Oh, Starbucks. Oh, there's 300 and what calories in that drink? I don't know about you, man, but if I'm going to consume calories, I want to chew on it. I don't want... <laughs> I don't want to just drink it. I want to, I want to chew on it, and I want it to taste good. Only you can determine this. You know, again, you have to be brutally honest. Well, I don't want to share this with anyone. Don't share it with anybody. Don't share it with your husband. Don't share it with your wife. Just have your own little, your little pad. I carry pads with me. I always have stuff to write with. I always have. And with smartphones, you know, you can find a way to do it. Just write it down. Just see what happens. And just ask yourself, you know, well, gee, no wonder. What three steps do you need to take? I don't feel close to God, or I don't feel as close to God as I used to. Well, why is that? And just, how many times do you go to church a year? I bet you're not nearly as many as you think you do. Just write, write it down. Just write down every time you come, every time you don't come. We just launched a whole new series of groups. Well, I used to take groups, but I don't anymore because I'm busy and I'm this and I'm that and I travel. Okay, other people travel too. You know, you can, you know, come when you can come. It's not the end of the world. 
Here's a question for you. This is a, what a, a Bob Beal special right here. What three things can you do this year that will make a 50% difference in your life? What three things can you do this year that will make a 50% difference? Now again, you'd have to get a handle on what does 50% difference look like in a whole series of aspects of your life. What three things, this is just a great question to ask yourself. What three things could you do this year that could make a 50% difference in your life by the end of the year? By the end of the year. You got, a, you got a good chunk of the year ahead of you now. What three, don't have to do it in the next, doesn't have to happen in the next month. Just in the next, this year, what three things could you do that would make a 50% difference? Here's what I can tell you, friends. If you'll go through this process, if you'll put the time in to do it, you can get yourself to a focus you've never had before. And when you get that kind of focus, then you can achieve things that you've never achieved before. And your dreams can become reality. They can become reality. It, it, it can absolutely positively happen. You can have a dream year because your focus allows you to actually get things accomplished. And when we combine it with next week and the dream and the information you need to know about dreams and you put those two things together, you can get to the end of this year and it will happen. It will happen. And you will say this, this is like the greatest year of my life. Dreams that I've had for years finally came to fruition. Things that I've always hoped for and wanted to see happen are now a reality. And it begins with this one thing. I focus on this one thing. Pastor Rick will return in just a moment with some closing words of encouragement. Before he does, I wanted to remind you about our webpage, www.highimpactliving.com. It's your resource for a high impact life. Let's pray together. Lord, I just pray for your help, your Holy Spirit inspiration for each and every person who is willing to put in the work that needs to be put in, that you will help them, that you will enlighten their mind so that they can properly understand who they are, their uniqueness, their strengths. They can evaluate themselves honestly and see where they're at so that they can answer these questions that they need to ask themselves in order to have the kind of focus that you would help them. You would anoint their mind by your Holy Spirit so that they would have insights and thoughts that are greater than their own. And by, they put, by their putting in the work and by you doing what only you can do, God, the result is going to be a kind of crystal clear laser focus like they have never had before. And the difference that that is going to make not only in their life, but in all the people that their life will touch is just marvelous to even consider. And my prayer is that that will in fact happen in this year. In your name, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Thanks for watching High Impact Living. If you'd like to continue to support the vision and mission of this ministry, just click the donate button or visit us online at highimpactchurch.tv. When you give generously to High Impact Living, you're helping to spread the message of Jesus to tens of thousands of people worldwide. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time on High Impact Living.